You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin. Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody, that music means we are back once again, a little bit earlier here on the old broadcast channel. I got to head out for a big conference in a little bit out here. I want to make sure you folks get your crypto rundown in under the wire. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever scintillating, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Remember, if you like crypto, you listen to this show, you must. You should be checking out the pro, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Many great guests, many great guests coming on that show out there, including many from the world of crypto. So if you have more questions about the world of all things crypto and indeed crypto derivatives, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is a great place to go. Also, of course, live access to everything we do, everything on the exclusive podcast feed, nearly 200 hours worth of shows waiting for you there already. Options, oddities, the end of every week, live access to everything we do, a whole bunch of fun out there the options insider.com slash pro speaking of fun it is time to get into it listeners a just the facts ma'am edition of the bitcoin breakdown it's time to explore the latest trending activity trends and developments across the world's leading crypto market it's time for the The Bitcoin bitcoin breakdown all right everybody let's get to it time for the bitcoin breakdown Breaking down everything going on in the world's leading digital asset. Yep, we're talking about the big dog, which is Bitcoin. A little bit bigger this week, listeners, after some trials and tribulations <laughs> earlier in the week. Of course, as we're recording this on Monday, listeners, we're coming off the heels of a pretty intense week out there in the major markets. A lot of concerns about the financial sector in particular. It's coming on the heels, of course, of all those concerns over, over Silvergate Capital spilling over into the crypto space. That seemed like it sparked another wave of concerns about the health of the crypto space. Now, on top of it, we had fears about those concerns spilling out into the broader financial sector. So, of course, sparking a contagion. We had runs on other banks, including uh, the Silicon Valley Bank Corp and everything. Others, we have First Republic today coming under fire. So 
a lot of concerns spilling out over the course of the past week. So we saw a lot of drama in the crypto space as a result. And we saw a little bit of action in the in the old Bitcoin. Come into showtime. We are back higher, a little bit north of 24,000, about 24,208. We were at 22,374 on our last episode. So up about 1,800 handles. So 1,833 to be precise. So you might say, oh, all is right with the crypto world. And you'd be correct. But in between, at least for the time being, but in between, of course, we had a little bit more drama. We hit below 20,000 last week on Friday in the nadir and the teeth of all the big sell-off. We got down to 19,651. And the, today, of course, north of 24,000. So that's a huge swing. Closing in on a 5,000 handle swing in Bitcoin from Friday to Monday. Uh, the high, of course, coming earlier today, 24,500 exactly. So again, a lot of drama, a lot of living out there in the world of all things Bitcoin. That usually translates into some action and some volatility. So let's see what's going on. By the way, of course, all this action, all this volatility coming at you, courtesy of our friends over there at Amber Data. Amberdata.io, A-M-B-E-R-D-A-T-A.io, the place to go to kick the tires and light the proverbial fires out there, listeners. If you did that, you would see all this data coming into showtime right now that the vol is ticking up, as you would expect. Our last show, a little bit north of 48, about 48 and a quarter out there on Darabit. Right now, 61 is the 30-day vol out there in Darabit. So you're talking a little bit of an increase. And, of course, it got even higher. It hit about a 653 between shows so in the teeth of that sell-off all those concerns out there you hit about a 65 uh skew wise last show remember i said we were flat everything seemed like they were kind of waiting for that next shoe to drop well it dropped since our last show listeners right now the skew is back to almost flat about negative one and a quarter so slightly negative slightly bearish but in between shows we hit negative 12 about a negative 12.15 actually so things got decidedly bearish again i told you we broke the 20K handle. Once that happens, it's kind of lookout below season in Bitcoin. So not surprising that the skew got that bit. In fact, I'm surprised it wasn't a little bit higher out there. In terms of what's open for size out there right now in options over there on Darabit on the Bitcoin side, we got a little bit more paper filling things in out there. We've got 188,000 calls open right now. It's up about 7,000. So net, not a huge change. Puts a little bit more, as you might expect. The puts up to 115 and a half thousand. That puts it up about 34,000 contracts from this time last week. So puts stealing a bit of a march <laughs> on calls this week. Again, not exactly surprising. So that puts us within that two to one. It's been around two to one forever out there on Darabit. Now we're inside of that. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe in and of itself, that is an interesting indicator for you folks out there who watch such things. Let's go out to the top five. Listen, let's see what the size positions are right now. What's open on Bitcoin options? Maybe there's been some shakeups in our top five. Let's find out. And number five is indeed a newcomer. It is the 20,000 strike with 16,700 contracts open. That is a newcomer again. We blew through it twice to the downside and again to the upside. So maybe not surprising that some action on the 20K strike would make it onto our top five list this week. Number four, we're jumping up a little bit back to 24,000, back to where we're hanging out right now. Pretty much the at the money strike list. And there's 17,000 contracts open there. That's up 2,600 from this time last week. Right behind it, we have the 23,000 strike, another strike that we kissed a couple of times over the past week. 18,000 contracts open there. That's up about 3,000 from this time last week. Number two, back to our old friend, the 30,000 strike, actually getting bumped down a peg this week. It was number one for quite some time. Now, all the way down at number two, <laughs> 20,300 contracts open. That's up about 500. It's not a huge evolution there. The number one big dog in Bitcoin options on Darabit this week. What has kicked the 30K strike to the curb? It is the 25,000 strike with nearly 21,000 contracts open, 20,900. That's up about 7,300 7, from this time last week. So interesting. And again, not entirely surprising that the dominance of that 30k strike to me has been a little bit surprising so not surprising to me that something would come along and usurp but especially on a week when we were blowing through strikes willy-nilly to the downside and to the upside so 25k taking the number one spot out there but i know what's number one in a lot of your hearts listeners it's Bitto. and man Bitto, what a beast <laughs> it seems like whenever we talk about it on the show lately it's been hanging out in the 13 and three quarters to 14 and three quarters range. And it is back there again this week, 14 and three quarters 
when we kicked off the show, up about one point. Of course, in the great Nader and the great sell-off there on Friday, it looks like it got down to about 12.16. That seems like that was the low on Friday morning. So that nice little pop since then. So it can't obviously get outside of that range. In fact, it hung out not that far from 10 for a while. But these days, definitely that 13 and three quarters to 14 and three quarters range out there. You know what else is up is the ADB. It's up to about 62,000 contracts a day. So eight, so that's up about 8,000 from this time last week. So Bitto obviously doing some paper. And that's the case again today. 227,000 contracts on the tape for Bitto right now. So Bitto just on fire. Nearly 4X. It's ADV out there, listeners. Let's see really quickly. What the hell is lighting it up out there? That has got everyone all hot and bothered. And you know, the 10 strike, 10 puts in particular, have been quite popular in Bitto. They were when we were flirting around the 10 strike. They've still been popular, even when we're up to 13, three quarters, 14, three quarters. And they remain popular today. 47,000 of the 10 puts in April have gone up today. Most of them on the bid. So it seems like a lot of people blasting away at some 10-put premium out there today. You like that, listeners? Selling Bitto at the 10 strike. Selling the puts of the 10 strike, I should say. Picking up some of the stock there. That does seem like it's a pretty popular trade. We've seen it go up a few times. Let's see. What do these go up for? 22 cents and 24 cents, respectively. So not a ton of juice, but it's not nothing. So if you want to get paid around a quarter to sell puts on the 10 strike, so you're picking up Bitto at nine and three quarters. Five points below where it is right now. Maybe that's an intriguing trade for you. Obviously, it was intriguing to someone putting up 47,000 contracts on that uh, today. What is the vol? You might be wondering out there right now. It's about a 61. It's up 10 points. Let's look really quickly at the top positions out there in Bitto. Then we'll roll on into the altcoin universes. Let's just do a quick top five because we are pressed for time, listeners. Number five, 17,600 of the March 14s. Number four, 19,000 of the Jan 18s. Interesting. Number three, 23, almost 24,000 of the March 12 puts. Numero due, 24,000 of the Jan 15s. You know it's number one. It's been number one for a while. The June 8 puts, the end of month 8 puts. I got a feeling today's paper may be taking the number one spot. Maybe usurping that. We'll, we'll see the 10 strike back up there. April 10 puts. That is intriguing. I've had 10 puts on my radar for a while to keep an eye on out there in Bitto. And sounds like someone beat me to the punch. Putting up 47,000 of those bad boys out there today as we keep on rolling right on into the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, listeners, welcome to the altcoin universe, the portion of the show we explore everything outside of the big dog, which is Bitcoin, including a lot of your favorites out there, ETH. That'd be time for an ETHO. What do you folks say, listeners? You got Bitto. People have been waiting for a while for ETHO. <laughs> Let's see if we can get that bad boy in the radar. Let's see what kind of paper we could see out there. I think it would be pretty fascinating. Speaking of fascinating, let's see what's going on out there in the top 10 from a market cap perspective. What's it cost us to break into the top 10 in the market cap? It's back down to about 8, about 8.3, almost 8.4 billion contracts is what it costs to break into the top 10. So... A little bit lighter. We were back north of 10 not too long ago again, back down to about 8.3. That gets us to Binance USD. Bit of a beleaguered product right now. SEC kind of casting a little bit of stink eye over at them recently, but still managing to cling to their spot in the top 10 at number 10. Number nine, Dogecoin, 9.6 billion worth of market cap. Number eight, Polygon, 10.2 billion. Number, number seven, it's Cardano, 11, almost 12, just, just a tick. Below 12 billion there, listeners. 11.999 to be precise. Uh, number six, XRP, 19 billion. Number five, it's USD coin, 40 billion. Number four, BNB, 48.7 billion. Number three is Tether, 72, almost 73 billion. Then number two, it's ETH, 205 billion worth of market cap. And number one, Bitcoin, back up to its 466 billion worth of market cap. What's the saga? That's been ETH since last time we spoke, listeners. Well, let's find out together. Right now, ETH looking nice, nice and healthy and robust again. 1674 is where it's hanging out. On our last show, it was 1565. So it's up, oh, about uh, 108 or so from where it was this time last week. So not a bad little run out there for ETH. Of course, different story if we extend that throughout the entirety of the week. The high came earlier today, almost 1700, 1698. So we kissed it before backing off a bit. The low, of course, Came on Friday, 
1377 listeners. So flirting with some downside out there as well. Not surprisingly, ETH vol usually structurally higher than Bitcoin. Not surprising it's going to catch a bid on a week like last week. And that was the case. 53 and a quarter on our last show, 65 right now. So things looking frothier, looking juicier out there. Still more than 2x the height that VIX got today, which was right around 30 earlier this morning. So still pretty frothy out there in ETH land. Skew wise, again, not surprising. It would move from flat. Both of them were flat last week. Everyone was kind of just twiddling their thumbs in the crypto markets last week, waiting for the next shoe to drop. Little did we know it was coming a couple of days later. Uh, now still negative, negative 3.15. In fact, I have it up here right now. Let's go look and see really quickly, listeners, so we can find out how negative things got since our last show. And it looks like the nadir for skew out there came actually on Saturday. It got negative 15 and a half, listeners. So, yeah, things were looking pretty dire heading into the weekend. Obviously, everyone was concerned that these fears of contagion would continue into Monday and all would just be just annihilated on the open today. So far, that has not been the case. Uh, OI-wise, what's going on out there? Different than Bitcoin. Bitcoin, we saw pretty much mostly put paper. Here, we, we see equal size positioning, which is kind of interesting. 190,000 c- calls, easy for me to say, 190,000 calls being added and 192,000 puts being added. So right now, we're at 2.78 million calls and exactly 1 million puts. So kind of interesting. Again, well below our four to one calls over puts ratio. We're hanging out a little bit less than three to one now, which is kind of interesting. Let's see what's open for size out here on the old ETH size positions here. And number five, we've got the 3,500 strike open for 203,000 contracts. That's down a thousand. Number four, we have the 1,600 strike, 228,000 down about 12,000. So a little bit of closing paper there. Number three, the 1,900 strike jumping up. Multiple places in the top five, and of course, many places in our own hearts as well. 258,000 contracts open there. That's up 90,000 from this time last week. So folks come into play on the 1900 strike. That's interesting, considering we didn't really kiss it this week. The highest we got was 1700. But folks, they were open on 1900 for size. Number two is the 4,000 strike. A little bit of vestigial paper still hanging out there, 254,000. Actually gained 11,000 contracts this week, so some folks were opening on 4K this week. And number one, 1,800. It's got 294,000 contracts open. That's up about 15,000. Quick rundown of some of the rest of your favorite altcoin, then we'll get out of here for this week. Listen, like I said, got to catch a plane. 20 and a half is where we're hanging out in Solana right now. It was 2082, so it's down about a little more than... About 30 cents on the week out here. Uh, let's go to XRP. Not really doing much. It's pretty much almost exactly on 37.1 a week ago. 37.1 right now. Not exactly surprising. XRP still has that sort of Damocles hanging over it until that's resolved. Can't expect a ton from them. A uh, Dogecoin ticking down about 0.02 cents out there. Litecoin, 88 exactly last week. 82.3 this week. So down about five and three quarters. Run down a few more. Cardano, 33.2 cents last week, 34.5 cents this week, up 1.3 cents. Polkadot, about six bucks last week, about six bucks this week. So pretty much unched. And our old friend Shiba Inu owes 0.000011 last week. This week it is 0.000010. All right, that is going to do it for this Just the Facts, ma'am, edition of the Crypto Rundown. Hope all of you out there had a safe and a profitable trading week. At the very least, you kept your powder dry, kept yourself safe and all these mad swings out there. Remember, if you're missing out on the rest of the network content, you should be subscribed to that. That is the place you need to go. You also need to go to amberdata.io to kick the tires and light the fires on all these analytics I'll be back later this week for some more live content from the conference live on Thursday. You get your on-demand content throughout the week, as usual, Education Wednesday, all that other good stuff. Uh, Listeners of this show may like Twifo this week in Futures Options. I'll be doing that live from the Futures Industry Association Conference a little bit later this week. Then back in the Friday studio for all the Friday shows, back in the studio, I should say, on Friday for all the Friday shows, Vol Views and Options Oddities for all your pro folks. And then back again in the old Chi-Town studio next Monday, another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there, everybody. 
The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 